Yes, I plan on doing ship stereotypes. No, it won't be anytime soon. Assuming you can read, you're probably thinking to yourself, This guy's a fucking idiot. The brig is way better. You get more cannons and an extra crewmate. Plus, you can use the, uh... The, the brig. Seriously, Red, there's too many things in this game named brig. In case one of your crewmates is being an asshole. Well, no. Let's dive in and learn why the sloop is better than the brig. The sloop is powerful because it can turn on a dime, has convenient cannonball barrel placement, and can be efficiently used by a single person. The galleon is powerful because it's too tall to hit the bottom deck half the time, resulting in superfluous holes that don't matter unless you get hit by a ballast ball. You also get a huge crew and four cannons per side. But the brig doesn't have any advantages. Let's start with the jail cell. To my understanding, there were more ships planned for the game, and as such, each ship that made it in was intended for one extra crewmate. The sloop was supposed to have three people which would allow use of the jail cell. But since you can't get a majority out of two votes, it wastes space. Or does it? Yes, you can spawn in there with no way out, but that bug applies to every ship. Have you considered the fact that this cell's presence prevents cannons from punching holes in this part of the wall? The sloop literally has a small patch of armor on the left side. Meanwhile on the brig, it's smack dab in the middle, not only not providing armor, but also separating the water barrel and the food barrel by two arbitrary hallways. It also has the worst cell in the sense that anyone inside can shoot at the crow's nest, hitting anyone trying to stash kegs up there. This isn't possible on the galleon because you're in an enclosed space, and it's not possible on the sloop because that cell is non-functional. As for the cannons, while more is always better, the cannoneers can be blinded if the mass goes down. Observe. This isn't a problem with the other ships. Hell, this sail is awful regardless. Man, I can't see shit! But backstabber, I hear you cry because none of you can pronounce my username. The Dark Adventurer sails! That doesn't really solve the problem, it just makes it mildly less awful. And plus, needing special sails that cost over 8 million doesn't excuse the brig's poor design. Rig can't turn worth shit, and doesn't have the innate wind advantages that the others have. The sloop is the fastest against the wind, and the galleon is the fastest with the wind. What does this fucking thing have? Uh, I don't know, a great personality? On a sloop, you can do my signature crow's nest kegging method. Rather than jumping off the back of your ship and swimming a keg over, which you can easily miss, you can ram ships and do an Assassin's Creed leap onto the enemy ship. Surprisingly, I've never, ever broken my ankle doing this. I'd recommend kegging ships here, here, and here. The low deck on a galleon works just as good, but up here you can break their main mast, and it's faster. On other ships, this method doesn't work unless you do it horizontally, which is less effective. The reason for this is the crow's nest is too far back on the bigger ships for ramming. You won't land on the ship. Now yes, the galleon can't pull this off effectively either, but the galleon has an invisible wall that looks something like this. You can't leap onto them from the front. I've tried many times. This defense compensates for its lack of ability to crow's nest keg. The brig does not have this defense. Lastly, the brig only has one deck, whereas the sloop technically has two. You have this upper area here, and the lower one. The brig, however, is just a straight tube. This makes it way more vulnerable to ballast ball and damage in general. Holes in the back of the sloot in comparison are much less of a threat and can be dealt with after a battle rather than during it. 